Hi, this is Paul. Now I'd like to show you some more work that I've done with DNA geometry. The scholars tell us that the DNA stretches out or winds into itself just like a nylon string. What I show in front is basically just using two simple swirls. Most of this stuff they call sacred geometry and it's like a puzzle. It always seems to go a simple but perfect way. Okay, so let's move on and let me show you what I've got. In my earlier video, the nine bends of DNA, I showed 12 dodecas. This gives us the basic bank of DNA swirls, which was three green bend swirls at 120 degrees to each other, and three blue swirls that was 120 degrees, and finally the 369 red bends that were 120 degrees to each other. And after that video, I focused on the vectors of these swirls. I mentioned that these were a major discovery. So now let's take another closer look. I showed in my last video that the sequence of the nine bends could be shown just like a metro. We'll start with the green bend one first. Now we have the blue bend number two. Now we have the red bend number three. So now we start a second cycle with green again. And now for the blue again. And now for the red number six. So the final three starts with the green again. And this will be number seven. And then we get the blue. And that will be number eight. Finally, we end up with the nine, which is the red again. Okay, now I'm going to show this anime in the top view. Okay, now it's plain to see. You can see the vector bends turn into the exact position of the vectors that shows on the dodeca. So it lines up perfectly with these vectors. And this is what I think is a major discovery. Because I showed this metro in my last video and it will do the same around every vector in the same configuration. And it will also turn 120 degrees three times. So I don't think you have to be a brain surgeon to see that there's a perfect order here. Okay, so after we've done number 9, it goes on to the next center. And it arrived on the green and cyan vector. This was number 6 bend. Later on I'll be using this bend, so I thought I'd bring it up. Okay, now I'm going to show the 12 strings of DNA and I'm going to split the vectors into sections of three. Each of these sections are linked together in a hierarchy. I start this little anim with the red bends first, then I go to the green, and then I go to the blue. Now you see that the green is the first in the hierarchy. That will stay with the same vector. But notice, when we activate the blue bend, the red one gets moved to a new vector position also. So now I'm going to put all this in the top view and you can see it much better. Now I'm only showing this geometry to show the three axes 120 degrees apart because in reality the string won't be split. The hierarchy will keep on going. So as you can see, every time it moves into a new vector position, I've got it colors matching that vector position. It just needed three bends for this animation. And I think if you make copies of them three bends, you're going to get as much DNA geometry until the cows come home. Okay, now I'm going to move back to the 12 swirls again. I'm going to add two more swirls on the bottom. The new white swirl is a copy of a number one green, and the purple swirl is a copy of the red number six. The red number 6 is the next center as I showed earlier. When you reorientate with the swirls and using the colored helixes, you can't really go wrong. But when you just use the vectors, you have to have the direction of the bend correct. Okay, we we'll make a copy of the purple and white pair and we'll take it to the top. And we'll make this the white and the gold. And like I said, as long as you rotate the swirls, and the helixes match up, you can't go wrong. I'm calling these white and purple interlinks and white and gold interlinks. So I'm going to have to do these with the dodecas also. Notice that I've added 
a yellow helix on the side of the dodeca. These are to make sure that the bends are in the correct orientation. Because don't talk to me about chaos. Okay, now I'll do exactly the same with the vectors. Let's see exactly what happens when we make a bend on the 3, 6 and 9. Now look, we get in a helical form. I think Tesla might have found this in his calculations. Okay, so look what happens when we activate the green bend. She starts to fold up a lot closer. It looks a little bit five-sided. So now we'll operate the three blue bends and see what happens. Now look what has happened. The red and the yellow going in and the red and the yellow coming out are matching in the same orientation. This will be important because you can add other pieces under 20 degrees to these. Okay, we'll go to the vector start again. And now we'll bring in the set of swirls. We'll take the vectors away for this to be more clear. Okay, so now we'll start this little animation off by using the red swirls first. So now we'll activate the green swirls, which comes in second. So the last of the three is the blue swirl. I went into detail about these swirls on my video, the nine bends of DNA. Now you can see the gold and white swirl are facing upwards again, following the vectors I showed you. Now I'm showing it rotating because I wanted you to show how tight them swirls went, but they're not overlapping. Notice I rotated the vector assembly also because it's got to be the same as the DNA. Otherwise, your nose would end up in Texas. Let's make three copies of these nine bent sections and bring them together as shown. Now look what happens when I animate the nine red bends and that will be three sets of three, six, nine. As you can see, she's forming a nice helical shape. I'm spinning it around so that you can take a better look at it. But in reality, she doesn't spin around. When she stops, I'm going to activate the green swirls and see what we got. Now look what happens when we animate the green swirls, including the red swirls. Now it's starting to form a coil. So I'm going to rotate this around a little bit for you to take a look at. And then we're going to operate the blue swirls. Now we'll take it from the red swirls through the green swirls. And then we're going to take it to the blue swirls. And look what we've got. Now it's plain to see that she goes in and she comes out on the same axis. This is very important. So now we know it's possible for the DNA to be exactly the same on any of the 10 or 20 vectors. Now I'm going to take you from the swirls and take you to the vectors. I got something interesting to show you. I've made the nine bends with these vectors exactly the same as the swirls using the red swirls. Okay, we'll start with the first two matching vectors. That will be the red and the yellow. So we'll call this vector 1. Now we'll go to vector 2. Now we'll go to vector 3. And now for vector 4. And then comes vector 5. And now we have vector 6. And now for vector 7. And now we have vector 8. And finally, we have vector 9. Okay, now we've come to the end of this little discovery. So then I show you that the swirls comes exactly the same. So we're going to have to leave this to go on to the next discovery that I've made. Okay, in front I show a string of six segments. Now I split these segments using the white and purple interlinks that I showed earlier. When I activate one of them bends on each segment, look what happens. After the first bend, I had to use an extra interlink set so that it will rotate 120 degrees to the first one. Now each of them segments could be 120 or 360 pieces of DNA. So this method could be used for making different assemblies of piles of DNA.
So now I've linked three of them sets together to show you what I've got. Now this, as you can see, is another new helical form that I've discovered. It is three sets of five, starting and ending in the same axis. And this has led me to discover a third DNA metro. So let's take a closer look at this metro. So we'll start the metro with the red and the yellow as one. So then we go to two, and then we go to three, and then we go to four, and then we go to five, and then we back to six. So now we can move to the second five section. And the next five will start as a six hundred and twenty degrees further around. Then the next vector will be seven. Now we can go around to number eight. And now we have number nine. And now we have number ten. So this brings us right around to red and yellow again, number eleven. So I'll move the camera around to show this last five. And as you can see, we can now start with the red and yellow, which will be number 11. So now the metro will start and look, it's going to take us to number 12. And now we'll go to number 13. And the next one's going to be number 14. Okay, almost there. Now we've got 15. And we're back to the center again, and that gives us 16. Okay, let's go back to the helical shape again. Now I'm going to animate the green swirls, which are in the white dodecas. Now look what's happened. We're beginning to get acute angles also. I'll give it a spin around for a better look. Now I'm going to activate the red swirl in the other interlinks. And now look, we're getting pentagon arrangements. And we have one set of swirls left, the green ones. Now look what happens when I activate them. And these open everything right out. So I would say there's something new for the scholars to think about. Because all this geometry just came out of three bends. Just like RGB pixels. This vector system works for other things other than DNA also. Let's take a look. Now look at V1 type. This is the arrangement that I use for DNA. I haven't worked on V2 type yet. But I showed the vector system similar to V3 in my last video. So I'm bringing back the animation of the 10 vector system I showed in my last video, but I've done it a little bit better. What I haven't showed is that these vector systems going around the metro, they'll rotate 120 degrees and give you more sequences. I think we're just looking at the tip of an iceberg here. I've got a feeling that this vector system is the system that everything goes on. It's like a roadway. Because many chemical arrangements uses the cubical arrangements. But these are vectors. And the vectors are the vectors of these cubes. Because the bends never go out of the system. You can manipulate the bends as much as you want. And it never goes out of the vector system. I also think that the interlinks are very important. I think it needs more research about these interlinks, but I think nothing ever goes wasted. I think all the work that I've done with 3D geometry looking for order has provided a lot better stepping stones. I realize most scholars like to work in two dimension, but it's essential for this stuff to be in three dimension. So this is Paul saying thank you very much for looking at my video.